recording going. I regret uh, because of the um, uh, the strictures of the schedule that I'm going to have to uh, ask for your uh, accommodation in terms of abbreviating some content here. Um, uh, we want to um, focus our energies on on really high leverage uh, material and. Um, uh, the next topic that I, I want to talk about is an important one. Um, uh, talk about Markov chain Monte Carlo techniques, but it's important for for building some intuition for some later techniques, particularly. And um, uh, normally, I would go into it in considerable detail, but I think the much more exciting stuff is coming with the discussion of particle filtering. Um, uh, we will need some of this material for MCMC when we get to PMCMC tomorrow. So what I'm going to do is try to give a somewhat unusual rendition of this, um, where I will try to encapsulate in a nutshell some basic features of MCMC without trying, without even pretending to sort of give a, um, a thorough appreciation for it. But rather, I'm going to give you the core intuitions um, that I'd like you to take away. So when it comes time for PMCMC, you can, you can understand it. MCMC is a technique of interest, and it's a technique of note when it comes to, to models. But, um, uh, but I think the, the really more transformative stuff is the particle filter, good particle MCMC. So um, uh, I'm going to you know, I can refer you to, and I will try to make sure I post a link to a discussion where I do go through MCMC in some detail. Uh, with So for if anyone would like to have that, I will post a link which has a good systematic step-by-step -step treatment of MCMC. Um, and I'll post it to the bootcamp uh, playlist. Um, and uh, we'll make sure people are aware of it. But for now, I'm going to, I hope you'll forgive me for giving an abbreviated one. Maybe it will give some high level insights that could otherwise be lost and difficulty seeing the forest because of the trees. Um, uh, so I'll be focusing on the forest here. Um, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, we, uh, we talked yesterday about, um, uh, calibration. Um, and we spoke about the importance of leveraging uh, the, uh, the type of data that's available about system behavior uh, overall, um, or about areas of the system, to cross-check our understanding of, of the model's behavior, to, and, and to inform our understanding of parameter values so that we adjust parameters to the model behavior best matches the observed data. And that's a theme that's gonna run writ large through a lot of components um, uh, of, um, of these bringing together data and, 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 and models. Um, so we talked about static parameter inference and we talked yesterday about calibration. Uh, and we talked about approximate Bayesian computation. Calibration gave us single privilege estimate that, that best matched up against, um, um, uh, against model behavior. Um, it, it best matched model behavior to uh, patterns in the world. Approximate Bayesian computation gave us something more subtle. Um, uh, so, in approximate Bayesian computation, you may remember um, that you know the idea is we wanted to not put all our eggs in one basket of having one parameter vector, one set of assumptions about parameters that would be the true one. Rather, we we want to sample different possible values of parameters. I, I've shown this here in a single line as if we have a single parameter theta that we want to estimate in general, we'll have a, a vector of parameters, a set of them, we'll have a value for 
the mean time to recovery and, and value for, you know, the, the, the rate of incidence of acute, um, acute depressive disorders or what have you. Um, well, several of these, but imagine if it's just one and we want to be able to, and, and different values of this parameter will have different degrees of plausibility associated with them. And we want to be able to sample in light of the data, and we want to be able to sample not just the best, but other ones which may give interpretations that are also very, very good, very competitive, to allow the model to very closely also match the data, even if they're not quite as good. They're, they're, they're good runners up, and we want to be able to, to sample from them. And the way in which approximate Bayesian computation supported this is it, um, it drew parameters um, from, um, so we are you know, trying to explore this cube and find um, not just one interpretation, the best one and as in calibration, but find other interpretations um, that are acceptable. Um, and the way in which we, we did that with approximation computation is we draw parameters from this prior distribution, which is kind of some subjective assessment of plausible values of parameters. And again, it's not typically um, in, for many Bayesian, true Bayesian methods, this, this really goes into the background because it gets overwhelmed by the evidence from the data. But here we drew possible parameter values. This is sample candidate parameters. That's the state of star. Um, and it's only if, when we run the model with those candidate parameters and we compare it against comparable data, that we get a discrepancy less than a certain threshold that we accept it. We accept this value as, as worthy of consideration. Otherwise we throw it away. We consider it too low low quality and estimate. And the idea is we, we're going to find samples from theta, which are um, or samples from the prior, which are close enough that uh, they, they yield model behavior that's close enough to the observed um, data from the world um, to be worthy of consideration. And, and that's how we did things with the approximation computation. Um, the technique we're about to look at, MCMC, has some features of this. It too is motivated by this desire to sample from a distribution, um, to not just privilege one estimate. But it's much more subtle and, and much more um, uh, nuanced and, and, and powerful in how it goes about the sampling, rather than just saying, hey, look, if we don't have a good match, we throw it away. If we do have a good match, we keep it, and that's all. With MCMC, we're going to sample more if it's more plausible, and sample less if it's less plausible. So we'll get lots of samples. We'll, we'll associate a lot of credibility with and, and have a lot of chance of, of, of considering, give a lot of, of of chance to considering things that are close matches um, and a lot less chance to things that are, that are poor quality matches. So we'll be sampling from this space. We'll, we'll get alternative interpretations of the situation. Here will be alternative values for, for theta, um, but we'll get a lot more of them where it's, it's looking plausible. And we'll get some, but a lot fewer where, where it's, it's less likely. Um, so that's the basic idea of, 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 um, of MCMC. And, and let me see if I can do it justice. I, I will just note that, you know, in case people would like to open it, um, I did post uh, this SEIR model here, which is the focus of, um, of the example that I would have gone through in detail. And so here we have susceptible, exposed, infectious, and recovered. And like recovery is like the number of people recovering per unit time is the number of infectious divided by the mean time they remain infectious. So if the mean time is 10 days, about 10% of these people, this quantity divided by 10 um, goes, flows, flows here um, to the recovered stock per unit time. 
and you know that can be written as a set of of, of ordinary differential equations. This is the rate of change, how quickly it's rising or falling. In fact, it's negative means it's falling. Um, this is the flow out of exposed and this is the flow into exposed. Um, but the basic idea is that these parameters in this in said model, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, um, each of those ones um, translates into um, a, a parameter and and I've sort of labeled the parameters that we want to to estimate um, we want to sort of sample here and you know each of these can be placed in this cube and we're, we're trying to find plausible values of these but we're not just trying to find the best we're not just taking those that give a match of a certain goodness and throw away the rest no 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 we're going to be sampling from these with a probability of, of sampling them that's proportional to how good they are. Um, um, okay, so to so their probability of occurrence. Now, this method, MCMC, is specific for deterministic systems. Calibration, approximation, computation, span. They can handle deterministic, they can handle stochastic. We do a lot of calibration with stochastic systems, ABMs, discrete event simulation, hybrid models, et cetera. But MCMC is, is, is for deterministic systems. And, um, and in this case, we're going to, to be calibrating, um, in fact, uh, one parameter here and another parameter for the probability of reporting a case. Again, I have to apologize. I don't um, have time to go into this in detail. And I will show you a video where you can follow follow um, the explanation in detail. Um, but the idea here is that we're going to move beyond a point estimate. We're going to find a set of possibilities that all look pretty good. Um, uh, well, or th that, that differ in their pedigree. Some look better than others. Um, but and then some, you know, have no hold no water at all and won't be considered at all. So um, uh, I want to get to a, a key link here. So the idea is that we're going to, we want to sample from this, what's called a posterior distribution. So given the observations, why? Um, what's the probability that the parameters hold a certain value? I've shown it here as if it's a single value and we have a, for each, each value of this, we have a certain probability that obtains. Um, but in general, it's going to be, you know, like a 2D space. And it'll be like you have mountains coming out of this page here. You know, imagine it sticks out. There's some, some that sticks out according to the probability, you know, for this entire space. Maybe this is one parameter and this is another parameter. Um, um, that's what, that's what we're, going to, we're going to want. Now, once again, this is a Bayesian algorithm. So we, we have a prior distribution reflects some subjective probability. And what's different, you know, important feature different from approximate Bayesian computation is we're going to have likelihood formulae that indicate the kind of relative likelihood. If you're in a certain state of seeing a certain empirical data, Think back to hidden Markov models. And hidden Markov model, if we were in the outbreak state, we would expect to see more cases reported per day of highly credible gastrointestinal illness than if we were in the non-outbreak state. Both of them, each of them have a different distribution for what we see. And so it is here, a likelihood function will say, if, I'm, if I have a certain value of, um, of a parameter, what's the likelihood that I will see different levels uh, of, um, um, of of the observed uh, the observed value? Now, here, a parameter like we can't directly set that from the parameter. We don't. We we you know you could say a contract rate of point point one. Um, what's the likelihood function of observing different numbers of people infected at a certain time. Like, we don't have a direct way of doing that without running the model. 
So really what this likelihood function is gonna say is given simulation model output for a certain value of a parameter. If you plug that value, the parameter into the model and you get output, then at that time, what's the, so you have output at that time, what's the likelihood of observing empirical data at that time for, for some quantity? That's what we're gonna specify by our likelihood function. And um, I, I'm just going to, to, to get you to this, to, this key, to this key algorithm here. And I, I'd like to explain it graphically. The idea is that we wanna explore this space. We don't wanna just take the highest likelihood one and say, I'm going home, taking my ball and going home. And that's, that's the value of the parameter I want. We wanna explore different alternative parameters. And in, in, in approximate Bayesian computation, we only took those that were a certain level of goodness in terms of the discrepancy, and we threw the rest away. Um, it's not quite the same thing, but it's almost like we chopped off the top of these mountains. We only considered those that you know, were above a certain threshold here. It's not quite the same thing because we were looking at discrepancy function, not probability. But you could think of it as like throwing away all the rest of these possibilities. And MCMC is, is more savvy than that. What MCMC is saying is, look, um, what we're going to look at is, is we're, what we're going to do is we're going to draw samples with a probability of drawing each sample proportional to its probability. So we'll have some chance of having these samples, but there'll be very few of them. We'll have a lot more of these. And we'll have even more yet of these ones. Um, and basically, um, it provides a way of considering um, parameters uh, according to their, the probability that those parameters, in fact, hold based on um, the, the, the probability they explain the data. Um, and so we're going to be sampling a lot from ones that are plausible, that have high probability, and sampling low amounts from the ones that have low probability, but we'll have some. Um, and the question is, how are we going to, in fact, see this? Well, how are we going to do this? Well, the idea is that at any one time we'll be at a certain point. That's what's in, shown in red here. We'll be at a certain point of a certain current value of theta. Mm, certain current value of it. Um, and, and then we're gonna do one of two things. Either we're gonna stay there or we're gonna move. And, and how are we gonna determine whether we move? Well, it turns out that, um, um, we have a way of figuring out the probability at any given point. And this is based on what's called Bay Bayes' rule, okay? And um, um, we have this way of, of determining a probability of, 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 um, of assessing for a given theta and, and given observation what the probability of that is, okay? Um, or at least assessing it up to a constant. In other words, um, we don't, we, we know it's relative value. There's some unknown constant, but we don't worry about that. Um, that's fine. And so we have a way of, of really this is say P of theta given Y, but uh, and that, that should as well, but we have a, a way of, of um, assessing um, what this probability is. And we have a way of assessing if we, if we were to have an alternative value, a candidate value, theta star here, we have a way of assessing that's probability. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna draw a candidate value. It's not a given that we're gonna accept it. It's a candidate, it's a, it's a pretender to the throne. It's a, it's, it's, it'll vie for this. We're gonna have that. And, and then we're going to look at um, whether or not we're going to accept it. If we accept it, we'll move there. That'll become our current point. Otherwise we'll stay where we are and re-emit this one. Okay, um, so we'll accept this proposal with a probability given by, um, by this. Now, 
um, again, this is the snake phenomenon, right? Like I show mathematics, some people run from it, some people run to it. Um, some people may recognize this is the likelihood. Um, so if, if I have this value, theta star, if that's, if that's the value I have for the parameters, what's the likelihood of observing the empirical data? Mm, I have a certain likelihood of observing it. That's what I specify in my likelihood. And how do I specify that? Well, I run the model on this and I get some number of people, maybe Y is the number of people reported in the population as, as, as being newly diagnosed with COVID-19. And I run it in order to assess that likelihood, I run the, mod the model of COVID transmission with this parameter value, and I get a number of people getting sick now. A, a flow of people from, from this state to, or, or from the exposed state to the infectious state that are developing symptoms. Um, I run the model and I get a flow here, number of people per day who are going here, and I compare it with the empirical data in this likelihood function. I say, okay, what's the likelihood of observing, given that this number actually did get, in fact, it did develop symptoms, what's the likelihood I would see this observed number who are being reported as, as cases? So I have a way by running the model of turning this into a model prediction that can be compared with Y. That's the idea here. And so I can arrive at, some probability here. This is from the likelihood function. That's something I, I have to specify for MCMC. I, I specify a likelihood function, okay? Um, the likelihood function. That's something I need to, to specify. And I give some guide for them. Typically, they're quite easy to specify. You don't need that for approximate Bayesian computation where you were just working with discrepancies. Here you do. Um, so, um, and this is the prior distribution. It was my subjective probability. Um, so I, I have some prior sense if this is a plausible value or not. If I, if I multiply those, um, uh, I'll get this uh, numerator and I'm gonna take the ratio of that to the, those comparable values for the current point. So this is those values for the current point where I currently am. These are these values for the candidate and and I'm gonna take this ratio. If this ratio is greater than one, I'm definitely going there. In other words, if, if this guy, um, this, is the post, this is something proportional to the posterior distribution. Um, I'm not explaining this, but, but it's, it, all it has is, is this, and this is the same in numerator denominator. This is just a constant. So um, this is basically something proportional to the posterior distribution, the probability of theta star given y. And this is something uh, pr uh, proportional to the posterior distribution, the probability of theta i given y. And basically, I'm going to look at this ratio. If it's greater than 1, I'm moving there. If it's less than 1, I'll move there with a probability given by this. OK? Um, we move with a probability given by this. And that's why it says minimum of 1 and this. If this is greater than 1, we're moving with probability one. <laughs> if it's if this thing is less than this, we're moving with a probability given by this ratio. Um, and this may sound strange. It may sound strangely funky, but 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 bear me out on this. So the idea is: look, if if this is a low probability compared to this one, again, I I, I I'm. Um, this is the, the type of mistake up with which I will not put, so forgive me. Um, so, so this is, um, this should be uh, that and uh, come on, get, get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay, and then this guy needs a similar, um, a similar fix. I, I, apologies for the, the mistake there. Um, so if this guy, uh, is greater than this guy, we're going to definitely go. If this guy is a probability less than this guy, we'll, we'll go there based on the ratio of probability. So let's suppose this one is, is twice as likely. We're definitely going there. If this guy is even the same likely as that, we'll definitely go there. Um, uh, otherwise, if this one 
like if 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 instead of being up there this one were down here well we would transition there with a with a lower chance it would be maybe you know two thirds of a chance of two thirds i would go there and what this leads to is and otherwise if we don't go we just re-emit this so what this leads to is it dwelling on areas where it's really high probability because from those you know um while it's possible you'll go to one of these other areas, um, a lot of the time you'll just stick here and you'll re-emit it again and again and again and again. But if you're in a low-lying area, often the candidate will be higher than you and so you're very likely to go there. So you won't tend to dwell here that long. You won't tend to sort of just re-emit things. So what's going on is that we're exploring this space where you know, uh, if even if we're at a high point, well, chances are we'll sometimes go out and explore more, um, uh, and and but we'll we'll tend to to stick a fair lot of time there. If we're in a low a medium place, well, we'll be there quite a bit, but you know, we'll be lured away by higher places quite a lot, and sometimes by lower. If we're in a very low place, we'll transiently be there, but we'll be moving on. And what this leads to provably is dwelling at each place with a probability proportional to, we'll be drawing samples with a probability proportional to their probability, um, their, their posterior probabilities given by, by this, uh, uh, by this uh, uh, product here. And so um, what's, why is this significant? Well, this posterior, I know it looks like a gobbledygook to some of you folks, but it, but this is what this is saying is what's the probability of that we in fact have these parameter values given the data. We don't know what these parameter values are. That's the whole point. We don't we don't know what the true value of these parameters are. The contact rate and the you know the time with which people recover, or the the probability of developing severe suicidal ideation or uh, from a from a non-concrete suicidal ideation or what have you and and what this is saying is you know we can um we don't know what the true value of those parameters are but we have a way of assessing the probability of any given value of these given the data the data is speaking to us and we have a way of saying oh yeah this one's more likely than that one and so what this allows us to do is to sample from parameter values with a, a frequency of getting each according to its probability. So, so values of theta that are looking more plausible given the data, what the data is telling us um, uh, are sampled more and those that are, that are less frequently are sampling less. But don't lose track of the fact that in order to figure this out, we have to run the model on these, on, on this data start. In order to figure this out in general for a given theta, the only way we can assess this value, the only way we can assess this like that is by running the model on this to get something that can be compared with Y, like a number of cases from the model, what the model expects with what we observe from the data. So Assessing this, figuring out what the value is will involve running the model. Each of these, um, to, to, uh, to compute each of these values will require running the model. And um, this is what MCMC involves uh, when we have a model involved. It involves sampling from different values of the parameters, not privileging just one interpretation, but being open to many interpretations but also not just throwing caution in the wind and say, we'll take any old parameter value as long as you know, it, has a, it has a discrepancy less than a certain thing. No, 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 this, this allows us to say, no, some are better pedigree than others. Some are more plausible than others. Some have greater plausibility as parameter values. And MCMC provides this way of, of calculating this and assessing this that lets us invest in parameter values that are, are higher quality, are more likely to be, to be true compared to those that are less likely, but still spend some time considering those that are low likelihood, but still possible. Um, so 
This is the idea of MCMC. We're exploring this space. Um, and there's a little algorithm here. We, we start somewhere and, and then we, we, we start where we are and we pick a perturbation. In other words, we, we sort of figure out, okay, you know, let's find a nearby place for a candidate. And we, we pick a nearby one that's a candidate value. Um, so this random value for perturbation, that's just, we figure out, okay, how far do we wanna go in each direction? And normally and draw, we draw that from a normal distribution typically. Um, so we're more likely to sample nearby, we're more likely to find a nearby candidate, but we might go further out. Um, it's a zero, zero centered normal distribution. And then if we, if we have something, a candidate value, um, that's what we did here. We, we, we were here and then we picked a candidate. Ah, okay, this is our candidate value, theta star. Okay, great. And now we, we, we need to evaluate this. That's this thing uh, for that. And so we, we take theta star and we're gonna evaluate the prior for it. Great. Um, and we get a value. And then we're gonna, oh gosh, we're gonna, we have to evaluate the likelihood function. Okay, so we run the model on theta star. We get out a value from that. And then we compare the model results with theta star to the comparable empirical observations. So we say, nah, doesn't look too good. So we have a low value of the likelihood function. So we multiply these together, we get a value for the candidate, and then we compare it to the, to the current values where you know, we've, we had computed before. If, um, if and we accept this with prob this probability, if we accept it, that becomes our new current one. This turns into the red one and we, we're there now. Um, and we'll find a perturbation around there and continue on around there. By contrast, if we don't, if we don't accept it, we'll just stick where we are and we'll, next time we'll find a different candidate, um, et cetera. So this, this idea is like, we're always at a certain point. This is why it's called Markov chain Monte Carlo. In a Markov chain, you, you're at a certain point and at any one time and you're gonna transition to other points uh, with a certain probability. And, and that's what's going on here. This is Markov chain, Monte Carlo, Monte Carlo, because we're rolling dice uh, as happens a lot in the municipality of Monte Carlo. Um, so um, this is the basic gist of it. And you know, there's some beautiful math there uh, for those who appreciate such things. Um, uh, but um, it can be proven that this explores the um, explores this distribution. Believe it or not, this algorithm came from in the 1940s, the work of Metropolis, um, and uh, uh, with, with some regret, I I'll, I'll note that it came from the um, from the Manhattan Project, the uh, the atomic bomb project in the U.S. For they need to sample sample values, but it can be used for good these days, and and um, you know, here we can use it to sample essentially from different plausible values of parameters that all have some consistency with the data, but where we sample more frequently, we give more credibility to, we consider more frequently, we lend more um, confidence in those that have better matches, those where this posterior distribution probability that that is the value of the parameter given the observation is higher. So that's the idea here. Um, how is this different from calibration? Calibration, we just had one stinking value of the parameter. We had just a single value. We put all our eggs in that basket. This is different from that. We're considering many values. How is it different from approximate Bayesian computation where we considered many values? Well, in approximate Bayesian computation, we considered many values but we did so with, um, uh, with the same basic uh, hope, but, but um, we, um, we just accepted it if it's discrepancy by running the model with that parameter value. If it's discrepancy with the observed data is less than a certain amount, we accepted it. Otherwise, we threw it away, tossed it away. We said, this is no good. And, 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 and MCMC is, as I say, more subtle. It's more, 
accommodating than that. It doesn't just toss away these. It says, no, there's some chance. And after all, if it, if the, these values may not look that plausible, but if they occur, maybe they have really big implications. So let's consider them. Let's consider their implications have some probability. Um, let's not just toss them, um, but we'll spend more time, a lot more time in the ones that are plausible. Approximate Bayesian competition didn't have that. Anything that met the threshold was considered equally good. We didn't, we didn't draw more frequently from the ones that are, are much more likely. No, um, um, we, we just tossed away things that aren't good enough. Um, but MCMC spends a lot of time on the ones that are more plausible. Um, so this idea of exploring the space, of always having a current point repeating it if we're if, you know, considering a candidate, but if it's not good enough, if, if we don't go there, we just repeat the current place, that's gonna recur in PMCMC. Um, and it's gonna lead us to spend lots of time into ones that are more plausible, have lots of samples from them. So those are gonna be highly represented in our distribution of, of parameter possibilities. And the ones that have low probability are going to be very few of them in our in our collection of possible sample values. So we'll have this big bag of possible sample values. There'll be lots of representatives of these peaks, lots and lots of cases of them, and just a few of these ones, just a few of these ones, and a kind of medium number of these ones. And we'll just run the model with each of those. We'll grab into the bag stick a, grab a parameter out, a, a parameter vector out, and stick it into our model and run it and, and get out some result for a policy. And then we'll grab another one and stick it in and run it out. And we'll see a variety of possible outcomes of that policy. Mm. And we'll compare that to different possible outcomes to the baseline. And we'll say with a certain probability, our you know, our policy has uh, improved the situation by at least this amount or what have you. That's the idea. So we're gonna have this big bag of possibilities and these ones will be represented a lot. These ones just a little, these ones medium amounts. Uh, whereas an approximate Bayesian computation, we'd only consider those that are certain goodness and we consider them all kind of the same, all the sort of same level. Anyway, that's, that's MCMC. Um, Markov chain Monte Carlo. Spend more time in the things that look good and less time in the things that, that aren't so good, but still have some representation of them. Um, so that is kind of MCMC in a, in a nutshell. Um, and uh, it will be coming back um, as a point of some note in our PMCMC lecture coming up. So um, my thought would be to move on from this to talk about um, particle filtering, which is, I think, a, a very useful um, method, which has more profound implications, um, but which will eventually be meshed in PMCMC with some of these ideas. But are there any questions people would like to ask before I go on to particle filtering? And, and that more radical kind of uh, radical way of bringing together data and, and models. Any questions people would like to ask in the chat or by voice? Remember, this is for deterministic models. This is for models which where we run them with a certain parameter value, we always get the, the same thing. It's not for stochastic models. The next set of methods we'll be looking at will be for stochastic models. Approximation computation is for either stochastic or, or for deterministic uh, models. And, um, and calibrations for ether. Any questions about this? Okay. I think there's kind of shock and awe here. Um, 
Okay, so um, we'll we'll seize the moment and 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 move on here. 